two commonly used terms are web applications and mobile applications. While they both pertain to applications, they differ. In this video, we examine the distinction between web apps and mobile apps. In the B2B space, we often see businesses thinking they need a mobile app, when a web app might be just what is needed. We'll discuss trade-offs later in the video. Let's get into it. What is a web app? First, let's break down websites versus web apps. For our purposes today, a website is a set of pages on the internet, typically showcasing various attributes of a company or product, not the product itself. Think of Facebook. Facebook has a homepage for the company, but when you log in, you are using the Facebook app delivered through the browser. Taking things a step further, I'm defining a web application as an application you interact with through a browser. The term interact is key here. You can make selections, click on things, save data, read content. Applications provide an online interactive experience. Websites do too, but applications take things a little bit further. Sometimes for fun, sometimes for work. Think Google Docs, Netflix, eBay, Spotify. Those are a few web applications that you might interact with today. These have mobile applications that can be downloaded as well, but we're talking about interacting with these services through their browser-based applications. Just because you built a web app doesn't mean it's not mobile friendly. With modern UI techniques and frameworks, you can build a dynamic experience that renders very nicely on a mobile device that does not require a mobile app downloaded from an app store. A mobile responsive web application is what we're referring to here. You can see that in the applications we just discussed. Load them on your mobile device using a browser, not their mobile application, and you'll still have a delightful experience. Progressive web apps push the boundaries even farther. Essentially, you are creating a mobile app that can be launched from an icon on your phone, very similar to interacting with a mobile app, but without requiring an app store download. Although the technology is forward thinking and works extremely well, there are some quirks that may make it a good fit for some, but a bad fit for others. To simplify, a web application is an application you interact with on the internet through a web browser. Whereas a mobile application is an application that requires downloading from an app store for use on a mobile device, such as a phone or a tablet. We covered web apps, now let's chat about mobile apps. As previously mentioned, mobile apps require downloading from the App Store for Apple iOS devices and Google Play for Android devices. They also require development in programming languages and frameworks separate from web applications. So there is an added burden for businesses when deciding to build mobile applications for their customers. In B2B, a web application is typically a requirement. So if a mobile app is required, there are at least two separate code bases that need to be built and maintained now. Aside from a mobile responsive web app we discussed earlier, there is two types of mobile application development strategies, hybrid and native. Hybrid is when your development team utilizes a framework such as Flutter or React Native to build one application user interface that gets compiled into code that can be used on both the iOS and Android platforms. In a lot of cases, this works well, but be careful if you need features on the phone that are not supported by the frameworks. In those instances, you'll have to go full native. Developing native applications for iOS or Android requires different tech stacks from programming languages such as Swift on the iOS side or Java on the Android side. Different IDEs for developing the apps and different app stores with different requirements. Relative to developing web applications, it's a much bigger burden to take on. When we develop mobile applications, we utilize the Turbo Native for iOS and Turbo Native for Android frameworks powered by Hotwire and sits in the Ruby on Rails ecosystem. This makes it extremely easy to reuse web views you built in Rails while allowing you to build native workflows where they make sense for your end users. Both live together cohesively. We shipped a Rails app last April that has not had a mobile update since the initial release, but gets you updates often. It's a complete game changer. The biggest downside of going mobile is that you're beholding to the respective app stores. They decide if your application can be deployed or not. You have to abide by their requirements or your app may not pass during application review. Yes, to deliver an app to the App Store or Google Play, it is reviewed by them before it can be released. I like to refer to this as liking to the days of shipping AOL on CDs. If you ship a new app in the App Store and find a bug immediately after release, it's possible that it could be days before that bug fix is available in the App Store. On the web, that's not a problem. You can deploy a fix as soon as it is ready. The App Store requirements is another big one to be mindful of. Apple and Android have specific requirements that your app needs to support. You can't decide to bypass these requirements or your app will not be approved. From my experience, 
Apple's requirements are a bit stricter than Android, and the App Store review is also stricter. But both sides do a good job of documenting the requirements you need to follow. Though sometimes there is ambiguity, and can be hard to figure out exactly what it is that they're expecting of your app. Overall, it's much easier to develop, deploy, and manage a web application. In the B2B space, I push clients to stay away from going down the mobile app path unless it makes total sense for end customers. It's typically very clear when that is the case. That's okay. Just make sure you've accounted for the extra development resources to help manage the web and mobile side of things. It is possible to manage web and mobile with a very small team, but often it makes sense to have a separate web and mobile development team, even if that means you have just one of each. Splitting the workload and deployment of both for a single developer is extremely painful. In this video, we covered the differences between web and mobile apps and some of the differences between going down either path. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to make an app, then I recommend clicking this video right here. That video will show you the exact roadmap I follow when developing apps. I hope you enjoy it.